Well, good evening. Hey. All right. Well, we're walking through Ephesians. All right. Because guess what? The fight is on. The fight is on. Do y'all know how to fight? I had to learn at a young age how to fight. <laughs> I had to learn how to fight because I lived in a rough neighborhood. I had to learn. I had to learn, hey, you better know how to fight. You better know how to put up your dukes and give a good punch. Don't wait. Don't talk no smickety smack. You better punch. It's time to punch. I mean, because while you talking, he could be punching you. So you better, you better get, don't start, don't stop. You better know how to back it up. So that's what I say to you tonight. If you're going to get out there and you're going to fight, you better know how to back it up. Know how to back it up. All right. Well, we're getting ready to put our armor on, so we got to go to basic training. So we're in basic training right now. So I hope y'all are ready with your Bibles and your notepads and your highlighters and your <laughs> you got all your stuff you got your little nest around you and all that kind of stuff and you're ready you're ready 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 okay we're going to review a little bit we're going to go back to ephesians 1 because we're going to be starting in ephesians 2 tonight ephesians 1 ephesians 1 1 through 14 we talk about seven truths and those seven truths i'm gonna go over real quick quick seven truths okay that we went through. Number one was know your call and start doing it. If you did not, if you were not here last uh, Wednesday, get the CD. And if you can't get the CD, look online. It's online. All right? Because these truths are very, very good. God is so good, I tell you. Number one, know your call and start doing it. Because guess what? If you don't start doing it, it's just a call knocking at your door, driving you nuts because you're like, I know, God, I know I should be doing that. I know I should be doing it, and you're not doing it. Just start. Start by joining a church. Start by, by getting involved. Start by, uh, because maybe you're not in the place where you, where you should be, but or, or what you're called to do, but guess what? God's going to make room for your gift. Amen. He always does. He always does. He doesn't place a gift inside of you for nothing. He places it in there to be used, and he intends to use you. <laughs> he does, I tell you. Number two, you are already blessed. You're already blessed. Jesus has placed you in heavenly places in himself. He has placed you in heavenly places. You're already blessed. If you're going to have the armor on, you better know that. Because you can't go out here, this weak person on the inside, going, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know who I am. I'm not sure. Hmm. That armor, you'll get beat up. I'm telling you, I'm equipping you for the battle. So that you aren't going to get out there and get beat up. You are already blessed. I don't care what's going on around your life. I don't care how broke you think you are. I don't care what's going on, how many bills are coming in. I don't care how your body feels. I don't care. I don't care. The word of God says that as children of God, you are already blessed because you have invited Jesus Christ into your heart, into your life. Walk it out. Walk it out like a soldier needs to. A soldier has to get up in spite of what's all the bombs and the the, 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 the artillery, all the things that are going on around him, he's got to get up and still fight. He can't decide I'm going to go into the bunker or wherever it is and hide. No. He's going to get kicked out of the army. He's going to get kicked out. Or at least his troop. They ain't going to trust him. Come on. We have each other's back, don't we? We're going to get, we're going to get there. We're going to get there. We're going to have each other's back. Number three. <laughs> I got men up in here. Where the women at? Yeah. I got one. All right. <laughs> All right, number three. God chose you before the foundation of the world to be his children forever. He chose you. You did not choose him. 
You thought you chose him. He already chose you. When you accepted Jesus into your heart, he said, yeah, she finally made it. He finally got here. All right. All right. Come on in, baby. Come on in. Let's go. Let's do this. Let's do this. That's what some, some enemy, but let's, let's get, get him. Okay. Number four, you are redeemed. Accept it. You are redeemed. Your sins are forgiven and God approves of you. Stop thinking you're always a sinner. I'm a sinner. I'm always making mistakes. I can't do nothing right. That's exactly what the enemy wants to keep telling you. That I just keep making mistakes. I can't do nothing right. You are redeemed. Get up, repent, and keep on going. It says, no, 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 I'm good. God's got me. I, I, I made a mistake. So what? Get over it. Put your, put your stuff together and keep on walking. Amen. You are redeemed by the blood of the lamb. Okay? You are redeemed. You can't put that armor on thinking you, you're old sinner. You, you are not going to pick up that sword then. You're going to back down and you can't do it. You are redeemed. Yeah. Number five, you, we know the mystery of God's will. Because he has revealed it to us through his word. You know the mystery, but guess what? You got to be tapped in in the spirit. You can't stop. You got to stop thinking about this stuff. Stop trying to rationalize the word of God. There's no rationalization in the word. It is only the spirit of the living God that will reveal all the mysteries that you need to know in order to be successful. And God has revealed them to you because you are his child. He's not hiding anything from his children. Amen. He wants you to be successful and he wants you to be victorious in every area of your life. But you got to know it. You got to know it. And you got to search for the mystery. It's right there. It's right there. Open the book, begin to read, begin to meditate upon it, and he will reveal everything. You can't just read it like. Like you do, like we're going to do the, 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 the four Gospels and the Acts and we read it all the way through and we have to do it four times in 30 days. Well, you can't stop and study it. You can't. But you're going to get some revelation after reading it four times. Trust me. Even in reading it quickly, you're going, to, you're, going to be, you're going to get so much. So it's in the Word. The mystery is in the Word. All right? Number six. We are heirs of God Amen. and joint heirs with Christ. How important is that? Very Come on. Do you even realize who you are? Yes. Woo! You are amazing. You got power. You somebody. You are somebody. Stop letting the enemy tell you you're nobody. Walk up in your job and let them. Let them see the glory of God, the light of Jesus Christ shining on you, in you. When you open up your mouth, it's just like, whoa. All that love begins to flow out of you. All right? We have benefits. Glory to God. Number seven, we are sealed with the Holy Spirit. And when he baptizes us with his spirit, we have a download of himself that contains the power. So we got power. We have power. We are sealed with the Holy Spirit. Okay? Remember to read through Ephesians 1 and notice the, tr notice the truths and, and meditate upon them to seal them in your heart. These truths are to, be, to strengthen you for the battle and the war that is ahead of you. To be a good soldier in battle and an effective in battle. That you will handle your armor well and come home with the victory and the reward, okay? Let me tell you something. As we go through Ephesians and we learn the things that we are, we gotta, we've got to meditate upon them so much that they really become a part of us, that they really begin to become a part of who we are. And we are so convinced and, so, and we so know that we are strengthened in him that when that armor gets on, it's not heavy at all. It's quite light and it's quite effective. 
but we have to know who we are before we can put it on, okay? So Ephesians 2. Let's read together through Ephesians 2, 1 through 10. So turn to Ephesians 2, verse 1. And you he made alive, who was dead in trespasses and sins, in which you once walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, and the spirit who now works in the sons of disobedience, among whom also we all once conducted ourselves in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature children of wrath, just as the others. Don't fool yourself to think that you weren't disobedient and a sinner. <laughs> Don't think, i always been saved. Yeah. <laughs> okay, verse four, but God. Don't you love those two words? <laughs> I love those two words. But God, who is rich in mercy because of his great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved and raised, up, raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. There it is again. Verse 7 that in the ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you have been saved through faith. It's by your faith that you've gotten where you are. Faith in God, faith in who he is, faith in the word of God, faith in what you read and what you've been told. And then you made the decision I am going to accept Jesus Christ into my life. And he came in because you asked him to, by faith, right? By faith. And that not of yourselves, it is a gift of God. Not of works, at least anyone should boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. All right, we're going to talk about not by works, but by grace. We're going to get some more truths, okay? We've got four more for this chapter. Four more truths. Number one, we all were there in our sins. Don't think yourself more highly than you ought to. Like you already then made it, I'm, I'm, I'm shining and I'm great. You are, but don't ever, ever forget when you're reaching out to your brother who is, who is struggling to reach yourself out and love him enough to pull him up. Because if it had not been for God, you would have been right there too. But it's, it's God on our side, the gift of God. So I don't sit there and feel sorry for myself. And I definitely don't sit there and feel like I'm better than somebody else. So when I have that armor on, I fully understand who I am. I fully understand where I've come from and where he's, he's bought me from and where he's taking me. Okay? I have to fully understand that. So when I wear that armor, I wear it with great understanding. No matter how good or bad, if we were not in Christ, we were sons of disobedience and away from God. But God, right? But God. Number two, we are covered by his mercy and grace. He rebirthed us and brought us alive again in Christ. We are able to sit with him and talk and talk and gather wisdom and truth and strength again in his grace extended toward us. Once again, we're able to be in his presence. Before there was a wall that separated us and it was called sin. 
But when the, sh the, the shed blood, when he, when he shed his blood upon the cross, it tore down the wall and he became the sacrifice for us. And if we're fully aware of his sacrifice and of his redemptive blood, we can fully understand why we fight. Because I will never, that's, that's the reason why I don't accept sickness and disease in my life. I don't care what the doctors say I have. I don't, I don't, I don't receive it, Amen. nor do I just blatantly say, oh yeah, 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 I have this, I have that, I have this, I have that. Amen. I am healed with the stripes of Jesus Amen. because he bore them for me. Amen. He bore the stripes on that cross for me. And I will never allow the stripes that he bore to be in vain. Not ever, not, not one second. I will, I will look in the face of sickness and disease and of the enemy and say, you do not win in my life. That I am the healed. And you're trying to make me sick. But I am the healed. And so you have to fully understand the sacrifice, the grace, and the mercy that you walk in. And what he sacrificed for us all. Okay? Number three. It is a gift of God. Grace is a gift of God. It is free of charge, and all we are asked to do is walk in it. That is it. Walk in the grace of what he's given you. Don't look to the left or to the right, but look right on to Jesus. I have given you the instructions now sit at my feet and learn of me. A lot of people just won't take the time. Or, I already know. I already know. I'm sorry, but you just don't know that much. Don't, none of us know that much. That where we now, we don't have to sit at Jesus' feet anymore. But I can, I can, I can read a little scripture on the run. I can, I, can, I can say a little scripture before I go to bed. I can, I can say a little something, something in the morning and think that's going to be all right. That's not going to be all right. If we do not stop and meditate and sit at his feet and listen to his wisdom and listen to his instruction, because sometimes it's not letter for letter. Sometimes it's revelational. Sometimes it's a download straight from heaven. Sometimes it's a direct word right from God. And you, you get something, you get, sometimes you just got to stop for that. And sometimes we just think that that's just it. That's good enough. It's not good enough. If you are going to fight and win, that's not good enough. If you want to just get by, if you just want to kind of be mediocre and you're just kind of a good Christian, Okay, but I'm telling you, the devil's going to come and knocking at your door and he's going to beat you up. I'm just saying, there's times when he's going to knock you in the head and you're going to be like, whoa, and you're going to get dizzy and you're going to be like, what just happened here? Because he took you unaware. He didn't, you didn't even see that one coming because you were not connected to the vine. Every now and then you might be able to get a little, little flow, but you need to be fully connected, fully connected in order to win, fully connected. I, I implore you, you need to take, I don't care what time of the day it is. If, it, if it's five o'clock in the morning, if that's the only time you got, get, get up, get in the word, let God just wash over you, put some worship music on, uh, get your Bible and your, and your notepad and your pen, hear what God is saying, get the downloads from heaven and say, God, what is it that you want me to know today? Because every day is fresh. Every day is new, and every day is a new word from God. Every day. So don't take for granted that it's just another day, because it's not. It's your day. It's your day for another word from God from heaven. And it's fresh, and it's new, and guess what? It's for you. It's not for sister so-and-so and brother so-and-so and the pastor and everybody else. It's for you. And it's for your success that you are successful because all of us are going on different journeys we're not going on the same journey so we go through different struggles different situations in our lives so i don't know what you're going through but god does 
So he knows exactly what you need today. But if you don't listen, if you're not in his presence, if you're not at his feet, if you're not listening, if you're not getting the download, guess what? You missed out. And you're not going to be ready for the battle. So it's important to sit at his feet. Okay. Number three, grace is a gift of God. So it's important to sit at his feet and receive the gift from heaven. Okay. Number four, it's not by your works. I don't care how much you work here in this church. I don't care how many clothes you gave to the poor. I don't care how many shoes you gave to, to the orphans in, in, in Zambia. It's not about your works. It's a gift of God. It's, 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 you just got it. You got it because you received him into your heart. You received him into to your life. Grace is there for you to accomplish and get accomplished everything you need to accomplish. Grace is just there. It's not there because you're such a great person, because you've done so much. It's there because you just woke up <laughs> and you accepted him into your day. And you said, God, walk with me and talk with me all the day long. I want to hear you and I'm going to be sensitive to your voice. And you know what? I'm going to be obedient to what you tell me to say, do. Because if you tell me to talk to sister so-and-so, if you tell me to talk to the brother over there, if you tell me to talk to whoever it is, I'm going to do it. If you tell me to give, that's a hard one, isn't it? If you tell me to give, whatever it is you tell me to give, I'm going to give it. Now, if you tell me to give all my clothes in my closet, I'll give all my clothes in my closet. But don't do it just because you think that's a good, that's a good thing I think God wants me to do. It's a difference. There's a difference because then you're sitting at his feet and you're listening to him. Okay? All right. Ephesians 2, 11 through 13. These were interesting, and, then, and the Lord told me to just break those down just a little bit because some people don't understand them, and you've got to understand these things if you're going to wear the armor of God. Okay? So verse 11 says, Therefore, remember that you, once Gentiles in the flesh or without God, who are called uncircumcision by what is called the circumcision, made in the flesh by hands. A lot of people don't know what circumcision is. We're going to learn in a few minutes. <laughs> that at that time, you were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. But now, in Christ Jesus, you who once were afar off have been brought near by the blood of Christ. So let's talk about circumcision. Let's go to Genesis 17, and we're going to read together 1 through 14. Genesis 17, 1 through 14. It's Christian education night, right? Yes, 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 it is. We're going to learn something tonight. Circumcision. How many of you know what circumcision is? A show of hands. You know exactly what circumcision is. All right. So I didn't raise their hands. Let's do it. All right. Genesis 17, verse 1. When Abram was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to him and said, I am God Almighty. Walk before me faithfully and be blameless. Then I will make my covenant between me and you and will greatly increase your numbers. Abram fell face down. These, these guys knew how to worship God. They really did. They fully understood the presence of the Almighty God. And God said to him, As for me, this is my covenant with you. You will be the father of many nations. No longer will you be called Abram. Your name will be Abraham. For I have made you a father of many nations, and I will make you very fruitful, and I will make nations of you, and kings will come from you, and I will establish my covenant as an everlasting covenant between me and you and your descendants after you for the generations to come, to be your God and the God of your descendants after you. You do know you're a descendant from Abraham, right? 
Okay, he said you were a king. Hmm, all right then. Kings will come from him. <laughs> I like that. And I will give an everlasting possession to you. Wait, I'm sorry. The whole, the whole land of Canaan, where you now reside as a foreigner, I will give as an everlasting possession to you and your descendants after you, and I will be their God. Then God said to Abraham, as for you, you must keep my covenant, you and your descendants after you for the generations to come. This is my covenant with you and your descendants after you, the covenant you are to keep. Every male among you shall be circumcised. You are to undergo circumcision and it will be the sign of the covenant between me and you. For the generations to come, every male among you who is eight days old must be circumcised, including those born in your household or bought with money from a foreigner, those who are not your offspring, those who are not your offspring, whether born in your household or bought with your money, they must be circumcised. My covenant is in your flesh is to be an everlasting covenant. Any uncircumcised male who has not been circumcised in the flesh will be cut off from his people, and he has broken my covenant. This is the covenant that God made with Abraham as a covenant with God and man. Circumcision is a, a removal of the foreskin of, of, of a male organ. <laughs> and it was a sign from the male that there was a covenant with God. But God, once again, what happened after Jesus? Let's find out. Let's go to Galatians 5, 5 through 6. Covenants are very important to God. Once God makes a covenant, nothing will change it. Nothing will change it. And God made covenant with you. And once you make covenant with him, it's important. He'll never break it. Only person that's going to break it is you. He won't. Galatians 5. Five through six. For through the Spirit, by faith, we ourselves eagerly wait for the hope of righteousness. For in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision or uncircumcision counts for anything, but only faith working through love. How about that? What happened was, I people began to make it bigger than what it was. Where people were being disobedient even though they were circumcised. They were walking in their own ways, doing their own thing against God, but yet they fleshly had the covenant. But fleshly doesn't mean anything if it's not of the heart. It means nothing. And so Jesus came to uh, eradicate that and make sure that we fully understood what a covenant meant. Romans 2, 28 and 29. Romans 2, 28 and 29. For no one is a Jew who is merely one outwardly nor is circumcision outward and physical. But a Jew is one inwardly, and circumcision is a matter of the heart, by the spirit, not by the letter. His praise is not from man, but from God. We have to remember, we have to check our heart. And it's all by love. It's all by love. If we are acting terribly toward our brothers and sisters, toward people, toward people, <laughs> I 
have been going, some of our husbands, you know who we, want, who we seem to, uh, I don't know, seem to treat badly more than anybody else is, is the ones that are closest to us. And we think we have a right to do that. We don't have a right to treat, treat our husbands wrong or treat our, our, our wives badly. We don't have a right to do that. The only, the, the, we, we, the only thing that we're supposed to do is to love them. And we cover that love with faith, knowing that our faith is going to take us where we need to go. Okay? All right. Let's talk about the blood. The blood. The blood of Jesus. Hebrews 9, 22. Hebrews 9 and 22. I can't believe it. A lot, of, a lot of churches have stopped talking about the blood, too. It's such an important part of our salvation. Wow. Hallelujah. Hebrews 9, 22. 9 and 22. And according to the law, almost all things are purified with blood. And without shedding of blood... There is no remission. That's the way God set it in motion. That it is the blood of a person that brings life. So it is a life source. And God always used blood in order to um, bring protection and to bring uh, sanct uh, sanctification and cleansing. Always. Let's look at Hebrews 9 and 12. Just go back a few verses, 9 and 12. It says, not with the blood of goats and calves, but with his own blood, he entered the most holy place once for all, having obtained eternal redemption. He took it for us. He shed the blood for us all, not with goats and calves and turtle doves and all those cute little things. No, with his own blood. All right, we're going to go back. Exodus 12 and 13. Exodus 12 and 13. I probably should have started with that one. That's a good one. Praise God. Exodus 12 and 13. It says, Now the blood shall be assigned for you on the houses where you are. Y'all remember this? And when I see the blood, I will pass over you. And the, and the, and the plague shall not be on you to destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. God always protects his people. He always protects us. And he always seemingly protects us with the blood. When we, when we plead the blood over our children, or over our, our, our spouses, or over our, our lives, or whatever situation is going on, it is a protective sign to say, I plead the blood of Jesus over my children, that wherever they go, they are protected from the enemy. So it is a good, good, good way to do that um, as you move forward. The blood is very, very important, okay? Three things the blood does. Number one, the blood is redemptive. Redemptive. It brings back to its original state a state close and in right standing with God. Our original state was walking and talking with God. Why aren't we talking and walking with him the way we are supposed to? He shed the blood for us to do that. Why aren't we doing it? Because we don't, because in our minds, we want something tangible and we want something audible but we've got to, God is spirit. And he that worships him must worship him in spirit and in truth. 
if we don't enter into and drop this mind and drop this thinking, we are never going to con connect with God. We got to stop thinking that he's going to come down in some wonderful shadow and begin to touch us and rub our head. He's not going to do it. I know some people have gotten amazing visions of Jesus and of God and of angels and I think that's amazing but that's not what we should live for because even the devil himself can disguise himself as an angel of light be careful what you ask for okay that's the word be careful what you ask for know that you know that God is and that God hears you and rest in that and know and be self-assured of that and don't 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 yes just know and if God wants to reveal himself like that to you praise Jesus I want to hear about it I love it I think that's amazing but that's not what we should live for every day that's not what we should be living for. We should know that we know. He says, those that would, would, what, what, that would believe in me without seeing me and without touching me, they are even greater than the rest. That, just like when he, what he told Thomas. When Thomas said, he, I, I won't believe unless I touch his hands and, and see the nails and, and the holes in his feet. He says, but what about those that believe without even seeing me? How much greater are they? When you don't have to see anything, I just know. I know, I know that I know, okay? Um, we have been redeemed back to the original state. Remember that, that you have every right to walk and talk with God today. He's opened the door. He's taken down the wall of separation from you so that you can talk to him. Okay, and walk with him every day, every day. Trust me, you'll hear him. You'll hear him right in here. You know his voice. You know his voice. And the more you, more you spend time with him, the more you will know his voice. And you will not be, you will not be uh, intimidated by it, and you will not be fearful to walk in it, uh, no matter what. Number two, you are washed and clean with the blood. Our sins made us dirty before our God, but now he sees us through the blood of Jesus, pure and clean and ready for home. How about that? He's, he's coming for a church without spot <laughs> and ironed out <laughs> and ready. You ready. You're ready right now, but you just got work to do. You just got work to do. And so just stay ready. You are washed and clean. Number three, you are protected. You are protected. You're protected against sickness and disease and attacks and even death. Just remember, the word says that weapons are going to form, but they do not have to prosper and overtake you. It's all according on how you handle them with your words with your actions. Sometimes we gotta laugh it out. Sometimes we gotta, we gotta, we gotta speak the word over it and just, just, just dance anyway. And, and, and just keep doing it. This is why we plead the blood over our homes and our children and all that we do because it is the blood that is the covering for our lives until we are in our heavenly home. Satan cannot enter where the blood is applied. According to what happened in Moses, what, uh, was it Moses? Yes, Moses with the plagues, and they, he told he told the Israelites to put put the blood of the lamb on the doorpost, and the the angel of death would pass over. Okay. We now have peace. Let's go to Ephesians fifteen, two fifteen, Ephesians two fifteen. It says, Jesus tore down the wall that brought peace. What walls were they talking about in 15 and 16? The Jew and the Greek. What, what walls are up? 
racial, racial, racial division. They say churches are, <laughs> they say uh, churches are the most segregated <laughs> uh, times on Sunday than any other time. Not life for it. <laughs> we all mixed up up in here, aren't we? Amen. We tore down that wall. <laughs> so there's no more racial divisions. There's none with Jesus. There's none with God. Okay? Circumcision and the uncircumcision, the religious divisions. How many different uh, religions do we have? Those walls, circumcision and uncircumcised, circumcised and uncircumcised. Male and female, gender divisions. Well, I'm better than you, and no, I'm better than you. No, well, no, you know. <laughs> no, 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 I'm better. You know, really? God made us to work together. He made us to be in unity, male and female, together. He saw that, he said, you know, it wasn't good that a man be alone, men. <laughs> but a woman comes to complete him. And you know what? He comes to complete us. He's the stronger. Physically, in so many ways, he's the stronger. And let him be stronger. Stop trying to be so strong. Stop trying to be so in charge. Hallelujah. <laughs> I like being the weaker vessel. I like him loving me. I like him, him taking care of me. I like it. I love it because he knows when the time comes, if I have, a, if I have an answer, he listens. We complete each other and we complement one another. That's what marriage is supposed to be like. Okay? I don't have to be the strong one. I've seen the job. I don't think I want I know I don't want it. I don't want the job. All right. We are all meant to work together for one common goal, to come back to our original state, walking and talking with God in the cool of the day and having dominion over the earth with God as our source and everything. That's our goal, guys. We aren't there yet. So we got work to do. We got things we have to do, things we have to accomplish. Okay? Let's go to Ephesians 2, 17, to 17 and 18. Ephesians 2, 17 and 18. He says, And he came and preached peace to you who were far off and to those who were near. For through him we both have access by one spirit to the Father. Jesus is our cornerstone. He is our cornerstone. We are one family with Jesus being the chief cornerstone. What is a corner, cornerstone? Something that is essential and indispensable or basic. The chief cornerstone on which something is constructed or developed. It is the very thing that holds the building together and keeps it from falling apart. He is the one that keeps us together and keeps us from falling apart. I want you to remember that. that. That seems so basic. Some of the things I say sound so basic, but yet we miss it. We miss it all the time. We have to stop missing it. Stop making this hard. It's not hard. It's just a decision every day that he will be my chief cornerstone. Our basic essentials is necessary things we need every day. Washing our bodies, brushing our teeth, eating, drinking, etc. He is essential and indispensable. We cannot do without him. He is the foundation that should that should develop our whole life. Our life should not we should not fit Jesus into our life, but we should fit our life around Jesus. I want you to write that one down. <laughs> you need to write that one down. Seriously, we don't, 
we don't we don't fit our life around Jesus. We fit our we don't fit Jesus around our life, but we fit our life around Jesus. He's got to be the chief cornerstone, the essential part in our life. Every day when we wake up in the morning, when we go to bed at night, he should have walked, we should have walked with him and talked with him all day. Okay? All right, all right, all right. We are getting there. Ephesians 2, 19 through 22, the last few script, scriptures. 19 says, Now, therefore, you are no longer strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of God, having been built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone, in whom the whole building, being fitted together, grows into a holy temple in the Lord. You are growing into a holy temple in the Lord, in whom you are whom you also are being built together for a dwelling place of God in the spirit. When we do that, we become a part of the family. I mean, it's, it's very interesting with churches today. They're so busy. We're kind of bringing them in and taking them out and bringing them in. And like we're going to two services in August. And, and, and I tell you, and, and the challenge is, is to keep it as a family still. To stop, don't make it seem like we're bringing them in and they're going out. Bringing them in and they're going out. But letting them know that they are loved, that they, we care, that, that there are a team of people here that are ready and willing to love them and to nurture them and to bring them into uh, a solid foundation with God and that we are family together. We're not, this isn't, this isn't just about church and just about uh, growing numbers. It's about growing people in their relationship with Jesus Christ. That alone, that alone, that people really understand who they are so that they, they too can, can fight the battle and be able to win and not feel like they're being smothered and being punched every day by the enemy and, and enough is enough and so we don't want to just bring them in and send them out and bring them in and send them out but we want to send them out equipped and ready for the battle and making sure that they are strong in the Lord and in the power of his might and not their own okay no longer strangers but fellow citizens saints and members of the household of God that's what we are we're family now your family now. <laughs> if if, uh, if that song didn't say we are, uh, I got all my sisters in me, I'd have y'all play it. But, you know, we ain't all sisters. We, we brothers up in here too, so. <laughs> but I, like the, I like the song. <laughs> it's easy to fight for the family, isn't it? You know, when we think we're, we're just fighting for just ourselves, I mean, I know, I know how I feel as a mother. As a mother, I'm ready to fight. I mean, don't touch my baby. Today's my baby's birthday. My baby is 27 years old. <laughs> so I tell you, I, I, you know, I'd fight for them. And when you really feel like a family, and when you really feel like you are the body of Christ, you'll fight for each other. You, you know, you're going to let nobody harm your sister. You're not going to let nobody harm your brother. And, and you make sure that you're standing for them. And so that's how we need to be. Um, because when we get that armor on, we really learn about what the helmet means and what the breastplate means and what, the, what that loin of truth means. And we begin to really start putting that, that armor on, you're going to be ready. Just remember, this is basic training, right? Yes. All right, all right, this is basic training. 